Welcome to Healthline 3. I'm Jade Belexa. We're talking about joint replacements with Dr. Vic Chatrath, and he is an orthopedic surgeon with Bozier Orthopedics at Willis Knight and Health System. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. I always enjoy coming here. Absolutely. We're excited to have you. And remember, you can ask the doctor any question you have at 318-219-4569. We're talking about joints today. And let's start back from the beginning. How common are joint problems? So joint problems are extremely uh, common. We, these can affect people who are seniors or the baby boomers, but they can also affect younger individuals who have been in accidents uh, or it could be a sporting injury. So it can uh, go a wide range of uh, people that we see. Uh, these individuals, you know, have either sought help in form of physical therapy, they've tried uh, home remedies, mm -hmm. and once they are not working, they come to us and we're able to help them in different ways. Mm -hmm. And uh, tell us about, uh, what all you see? I mean, w how do we avoid joint problems and uh, what causes them oftentimes? Absolutely. So there are a variety of causes for uh, joint problems. One of the most common is something simple called osteoarthritis, which is the joint wears out. The best way to understand, think of it like your car. You're driving your car, you put X amount of miles on your tires. Now the tires have wore out. Okay. So what do you do? You put new tires on it. The same thing kind of happens with our joints, especially the large ones, the knee and hip joints as well, that after a certain age or activity level, we've put enough stress on the joint that it wears out, okay? On the other hand, there's other kinds of joint issues which are called rheumatoid arthritis, where you have a medical condition, autoimmune condition, which is eroding your joint from the inside. That can happen at a very young age too. The third kind of joint problems we see which actually comes from injuries. So it could be an injury from an accident, it could be a sporting injury, uh, any kind of injury that's affected the integrity of your joint. So a joint is a smooth structure, it's got cartilage inside it. Um, when the cartilage wears down for any reason, like we said, whether it's rheumatoid arthritis, it's trauma, it's osteoarthritis, wear and tear, that's when these joint problems come about. What can we do to avoid these joint problems? Well, part of it is keeping your muscle strength good. So if you have good strength around the muscles both above and below that joint, the likelihood of the joint breaking down goes down. Uh, keeping our weight under control. So the way the physics works for joints is very unique. Every pound of weight that we drop decreases the weight on our joints by two pounds, okay? So by a higher weight, the amount of force that you're putting on the joint increases. So these are some of the simple things that we can do to avoid joint problems. Mm -hmm. At what point does someone decide that they need to have surgery or, or replace that joint? So ec excellent question. We, I specialize in joint replacement and uh, um, I serve as director of uh, joint replacement surgery at willis Knighton and Bossier. So we see a lot of people who have tried different things. Now comes when do we make the decision or when do we pull the plug to do a joint replacement surgery? The answer is when you've tried everything else, which means you've tried injections, you've tried medications, you've tried physical therapy, you've done a home exercise program, which means that you've tried maximizing exercise, strengthening the muscles as much as you physically can. Now, there is certainly a human limit to it beyond which you know the pain will stop you from going any further. But once you've done all this and you're not getting success, then is the time to do a joint replacement surgery. So it's never an emergency. When people come and say, I want my joint replacement tomorrow morning, I'm like, does that happen? It does, believe okay. me, more, more often than not. So I'm fortunate in my practice, um, we have patients who come and book their surgeries three to six months out based on their social schedule. But we also have a parallel list of patients we have to run who 
are ready. If any spot opens up, they want their surgery done because they're, they've tried everything else and they're, they're in pain. But to get to that point, you want to make sure that you have checked all boxes because it's surgery. Once we do the surgery, we can't take it back, right? It's, it's, it's a That's done deal. It's permanent. It's permanent, correct? So we want to make sure that you are mentally, physically, socially ready for it as well. You want to make sure you have good family support around you. You have time from your job, or if you're retired, you have ample time to focus on your recovery. You don't have a project going on. I have to remodel my bathroom. No, we've got to remodel the bathroom and then focus on ourselves. <laughs> we can't do those things simultaneously. Yeah. It's a lot of things you got to think about before you, you pull the plug and have the surgery. And the good part is, at my practice, I have a team. It's I, I'm lucky I'm the face of the team, but I have an excellent team with a nurse practitioner, a PA. We have, in fact, just added another PA to our practice. I have excellent nurses, support staff. They are aware of these social situations. So we don't just sign up for joint replacement right away. We want to make sure you're safe, you're medically safe. Let's just say you're 75, you need a knee replacement, and you've had a heart attack. We want to make sure we've involved your cardiologist. So your cardiologist has said, okay, you can safely have a joint replacement surgery. So we work with your family doctor, we work with other specialists, we work around all of this to make sure you have a safe experience. So what joints are we talking about? Hips? So in my practice, I focus on hips, okay. knees and shoulders, okay. large joints. That's what uh, my practice is focused on. These tend to be the most common uh, knees and hips I would say are the top. Shoulders are next in volume on the number of people who need joint replacement surgery. Okay. The knees probably the number one, which wear out a lot sooner than the hips and the shoulders. Mm. And uh, b these, these joints can be really painful. I mean, it, oftentimes, I mean. You it, mean before or after surgery or both? Both. Both. I mean, I would imagine. So uh, there's a lot of rehabilitation that it takes after the surgery and then. Absolutely. So that's an excellent point. We want to make sure that your pain matches your x-ray findings, your MRI findings before we proceed with surgery. Okay. We need to have reasonable expectations before performing a joint replacement surgery, which means joint replacement surgery is meant to make you active. It's not meant to make you an athlete, okay? Okay. So you, if you feel that I'm going to run a half marathon after a joint replacement surgery, that's an unrealistic expectation, okay? But if I want to go play golf, I want to go dance, I want to play with my grandkids. Do daily activities. Absolutely, that's a very realistic expectation. So we want to make sure that the amount of pain you have matches your expectations. Mm -hmm. Then comes the pain after surgery. So as we, we jump into this deeper, we'll talk about the techniques that I use in my surgery which help with pain reduction. We also do a lot of pain blocks, which means that we just don't give out a lot of narcotic medication. Because remember, most of these people who are having joint replacements are older individuals. So if I give a 75-year-old a bunch of narcotics, they're going to lose their balance and fall. So instead, at the time of surgery, we do a pain block in the knee. Let's take the knee as an example. We uh, put a pain block in the knee. I myself do an injection in the knee while performing the surgery. After the surgery, we do use a small amount of narcotics, but we use other pain medications as well around it to decrease the pain. So we make sure that your pain is managed effectively after the operation as well. All right, we'll get into all that in just a minute, but why don't we talk about the certification you all got, the Center of Excellence. I am so proud of it. I am, thank you for bringing that up. Yes. So willis Knighton Bossier is now the second center in all of Louisiana, not, not just Shreveport Bossier, all of Louisiana to have this certification. The certification is awarded by the Joint Commission. And uh, again, I'm honored, I'm humbled, I'm fortunate to serve as the medical director for joint replacement surgery. And uh, we went through a rigorous assessment process. They send an inspector out. 
Uh, even before the inspector comes, we apply to them. They have a rigorous um, list of things that you have to accomplish before you even, you know, even before the inspector decides to come out. So there is a, bag, a lot of background work that went in. And this went on for close to one year, I would say. Uh, again, teamwork. Um, we have Nicole Ortiz, who I wanted to recognize because she's an integral part of this. Rob Bruce, again, he plays a big leadership role. So amongst a lot of other people who are I'm sorry, I can't uh, name, ignore, everybody. Uh, name everybody. <laughs> so uh, then the inspector comes out. They look at what we've been doing, uh, the processes that we've been following. And uh, then you're awarded the center of excellence. And uh, as I said, we're only the second center. And we're joint commission certified. What does that mean for a common person? So what that means for a common person is when you come to me in Willis Knight and Bossier, you are getting the same world-class quality of care that you will get in any center of excellence on the planet. Okay? Not just Louisiana, not just Bossier. We are at par with any other center on the planet. That's what the Joint Commission accreditation means, that we're providing you the same level of care. So yes, we're very proud of it. That is incredible. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I know I that was a, a lot of hard work. Absolutely. A lot of hard work went in. A lot of processes had to be changed. And uh, sometimes uh, it's hard to get people to move, right? Mm -hmm. That, hey, this is the way we've always done it. Well, let's try something different. Mm -hmm. So you have to have a lot of meetings, a lot of positive encouragement, a lot of movement, changing parts. So it's a bunch of things that go in. Absolutely, but change is good. Change is good, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So um, let's talk about um, a little bit about what happens if you fracture um, a part of your body mm -hmm. and uh, you have to replace that joint. So, um, you know, we were talking about a hip fracture patient. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times the older patients who come with us, uh, come to us with fractures, their bones are so soft that the fracture cannot be fixed. Okay? It's almost like I joke with them, like it's like putting a screw in a banana. It's not going to hold. So it's pointless to try and fix that fracture. That plays out a lot in hip fractures, in shoulder fractures, where the bone has just become like an eggshell that I really cannot put any screws, any plates, any medical devices to fix the bone back together. We got a Humpty Dumpty situation mm -hmm. going on. And that could be like if someone fell exactly. or something Ex like that. Exactly, uh, from a fall, from an accident, those are the common situations we see. So in that scenario, we have to replace the joint. So patients getting a hip replacement is extremely common. Whether it's a partial hip or a full hip replacement, that we talk to the family, we talk to the patient, we look at the medical situation, and make that decision. But apart from that, you have to replace the ball of the hip joint in some uh, form or fashion. You have to replace the ball of the shoulder joint in some form or fashion. Mm -hmm. So that's a common occurrence. Mm -hmm. Actually, um, uh, doing two of those tomorrow. Whoa, OK. Um, that sounds really <laughs> intense. <laughs> OK, so, um, so what goes into the surgery? Let's let's get back into that with the surgery. Um, I would imagine that the the patient comes in. I mean, the, a, a fracture would be more like an emergency situation. Correct. So there is a, there is a difference when we have a planned joint replacement mm -hmm. versus a fracture situation. A fracture uh, joint or a person who has such a bad injury would usually come through the emergency room. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that is something which has to be done within the next 24 to 48 hours, okay? depending on their medical condition. Uh, we want to make sure that medically they're optimized so that they can have a safe uh, and successful operation. So we have an excellent hospitalist team um, at Bossier. We work with internal medicine specialists. We work with cardiology specialists. So a bunch of my other colleagues play an essential part in helping optimize um, and making sure that the patient is safe for surgery. Okay? 
Now comes the other end of the spectrum where these patients are coming for what we call an elective or a planned joint replacement surgery, someone who has knee arthritis. Those patients, we plan them out like we were speaking earlier uh, to make sure that all the social situations, the financial situation, the, the medical situation is optimized and we have some time to do that. So those are not emergencies, those are urgent, but we can plan them out over the next anywhere from one to six months. Mm -hmm. And uh, we use a bunch of techniques to get them ready as well. What are some of those techniques? So in my practice, I use a lot of robotics. The, uh, we've been hearing a lot about artificial intelligence. So it's a combination of both robotics and artificial intelligence that we use. So let's talk about a knee, okay? So knee is a very complex structure. It's actually much more complex than a hip. A hip is a round ball in a round socket. So a little simpler there. A knee is a more complex structure. It's got undulations, so more like a hill and a valley. So it's a more complex situation and varies from one person to the other a lot more than the hip does. To overcome that, we do something called preoperative scanning, okay, where sometimes we will send the patient to get an MRI done. The MRI will help make a 3D model. Think of it like GPS for your car, mm -hmm. okay? Now, if I ask you to drive to California, well, you don't know the way. So you use the GPS in your car, which tells you what turns to take. Similarly, uh, the robotic system and the patient-specific system we use to scan the knee tells me how exactly that person's particular knee is shaped. That helps me get accurate. The more accurate I am, the better you're going to do after surgery. So the accuracy of this thing is 0.5 millimeter, which is uh, less than my nail's breadth. So it is tiny. It is extremely, extremely accurate. Mm -hmm. So that's something I use a lot in the knee. A similar technology is also used in the shoulder as well, where they get a preoperative CT scan. That CT scan actually gets, gets sent to Canada. The bioengineers use artificial intelligence and create this model. Okay? That model uh, shows up on my email. I look at it and I'm like, well, I don't agree with this or I agree with this. I'll make finer adjustments to it based on my experience. And uh, once I like the final model, I send it back to them. After that, they actually do 3D printing. So like we 3D print so many things now, we will 3D print an exact model of your shoulder, which gets shipped to me physically. Okay. That is something I use in surgery, okay? So yesterday I did a shoulder replacement on an individual who had an extremely bad shoulder. He could barely get any motion. So he got the CT scan done, I'm doing the surgery, and on the table I have an exact replica, exact, like in millimeters of his shoulder. So I'm looking at it, okay, this is what I need to do, this is the part I need to preserve, this is the part I need to cut. So there is no guesswork involved. It's extremely precise. How, how has that changed over the years with, uh, with surgery? I mean, does that make it faster or how, how does that technology kind of change the way you work? So I always like to use the word safe. Safe, yes. Safety is my number one priority. It's the same principle that we're taught in medical school, do no harm, right? So safety is our number one priority. What it has done is it has made the operation safer. How? Before I go in, I already know this individual needs these components to be put in. It's not guesswork. Well, that, you know, let's open up the knee and we'll figure it out. We're not doing that, okay? We're doing accurate measurements. We are measuring everything precisely, like we say, uh, measure twice, cut once. Yeah. So, same thing. We're measuring everything appropriately. We know what we're doing in terms of surgery. And yes, it makes us faster, but being faster is not the goal. Being a safe surgeon is my goal. Mm -hmm. If I spend five minutes extra or 15 minutes extra, 20 years later, it won't make a difference 
but it will make a difference to someone's life if I do a good job. So that's more important to me. And that's where this technology has enabled us to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's incredible. So in the hip as well, we use a similar technology, which is called anterior approach hip replacements. In the past, when we used to do hip replacements, we had to cut the entire butt muscle. I'm sure our viewers have family members who've had that surgery done through the older way or the more traditional method where you have a scar on the side of the hip joint and the butt muscle had to be cut. The way we do it, we do it through the front of the hip joint where we actually don't cut across the muscle, we go between the muscle, okay? So when we're not cutting the muscle, we're going between the muscle, there is really nothing left to repair. There is no need to repair. At the end of the surgery, the muscle falls back into place, less scarring, your recovery time is cut by half, most of these patients, within two hours after surgery, can actually use a walker and put their weight on it and walk. So that's pretty incredible after a major surgery. Yeah, and I've heard that doctors, that's, that's, that's what doctors want the patient to do, get up and start walking after Absolutely. surgery. Absolutely, we certainly want them to be as active as possible because it increases the risk, sorry, it decreases the risk of getting a blood clot if you're up and about right away. It decreases the risk of getting pneumonias or a stroke or a heart attack because if you get blood clots, any of this can go to your heart, your lungs, or your brain. By being active, you're using your calf muscle to function like a pump, okay? When it's pumping, the blood is circulating and the risk of getting clots goes down and you, you actually recover faster too. Mm -hmm. And it seems like, um having these replacements are, are really life-changing for the the patients what have what have you heard after your surgeries from your patients so uh, when i became an orthopedic surgeon i wanted to do joint replacement surgery because as a young trainee i thought that was the happiest clinic ever <laughs> when i would go as a student to my professor's clinic these joint replacement patients would come in, they were so thankful because it was life-changing. They were truly grateful that we had a meaningful impact in their life. People who were struggling to walk, people who were struggling to do simple things like, you know, I can't play with my grandkids, I can't walk up the steps. It was life-changing for them. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was a no-brainer that this is what I wanted to do, that we're truly touching someone's life in a positive way and making a difference. So pe people are happy. Yes, there is a recovery period involved, like any other operation. The first few weeks are harder, but as the days go by, you have more good days than bad days. And once you've recovered, people really enjoy their joint replacement surgery. Mm -hmm. So hip replacement surgery has been labeled as the most cost effective surgery across all of medicine. And I'm not just talking what I do, orthopedics. I'm talking across all of medicine. They've compared liver transplants, heart surgery, any other operation, and hip replacement surgery has had the best cost, patient satisfaction rates across all of medicine. So this is rated by patients. This is not rated by the doctors. This mm. is the patients telling us. So we, it, it really makes a difference in someone's life. Yeah, it really does. Uh, my stepdad had his hip replaced. I mean, he lives back in Florida, but he, his life has totally changed. He can do things that he hadn't done in years. So uh, and Florida that's, is where all person. retirees go to enjoy their exactly. life. Exactly, <laughs> so there you go. Um, so what is physical therapy like since we're talking about hips, mm -hmm. wh what is it like for someone with their hip replaced? So, um, if I rate them in terms of how tough it is after surgery, hip replacements are the easiest for a patient to recover from. Then come shoulder replacements and then knee replacements. Knee replacements are a little harder uh, as compared to shoulders or hips in terms of physical therapy. So what we do is, when I do a hip replacement or any of these large joint replacements, for the first two weeks, we send home health to your house. Because we understand that you just had a surgery, your spouse has to handle or your family member has to handle you know, everyday tasks, you can't help with that, 
you might be in pain, uh, getting to your car might be difficult. So for the first two weeks, we send home health to your house. And they really help uh, get you out of the bed, chair, work with you in terms of exercise. Once you kind of hit the two week mark, you return back to our clinic. We get all your sutures, staples, everything taken out. Then you do outpatient physical therapy. You go to the therapist after two weeks. The benefit of that is at the therapy place, you have a lot more equipment than what they can bring to your or my house. So then the therapist will work with you usually twice or thrice a week, depending on how you're progressing. And the other four or five days, you do what we call a structured home exercise program. That means the other four days, you got homework. We're not, uh -oh. gonna, go, we're not gonna go home and sit down, right? <laughs> So we got homework to do, which means all that you have learned in physical therapy over the two visits that week, you practice and improve upon that in the other days. And sometimes they'll give you a little equipment as well to take home, like for example, I didn't have a replacement, but I had a shoulder surgery myself. This was four or five years ago from doing an obstacle course. Uh-oh, Th you, you go. got injured. I got injured. I was doing an obstacle course and uh, going across monkey bars. Uh-oh. And my hand slipped and I tore something in my Ouch. shoulder. Did you so know right then you tore something? I did, I did. I'm like, oh, okay. But I kept going, <laughs> finished the course, um, had my surgery done, and believe it or not, I was the best physical therapy patient. <laughs> Every day I I was, would hope so. Yes. Uh, they gave me these pulleys and bands and I would watch TV in the evening and do my pulleys and bands. Mm -hmm. And by six months, I was back on it. That's great. Yeah, but it was a lot of hard work that went in and I was very motivated to get back at it. Mm -hmm. So that's the motivation uh, we encourage our patients uh, that they can, they have. So they do a good, they get a good outcome after surgery. Mm -hmm. Um, kind of what's the time frame from surgery to, to when you're finished and, recover, and recovered? So the first four to six weeks are the more intense phase of recovery. You will note smaller increments or smaller improvements even up to the one year mark. Okay? Even up to one year you'll, oh my knee feels stronger. It's truly at the one year mark that you forget that, hey I even, have, even had a surgery. Mm. Okay, but the first four to six weeks are the more intense where you need time off work, you need to really focus on your recovery uh, and juggling that uh, pain versus movement, that's the first four to six weeks. That's the hard part of it. Yeah. That. And see, I joke with patients that, hey, we didn't put a motor in there. You are the motor. <laughs> so you, you have to move that joint. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the homework would be the hard part, it sounds like, just making yourself do it. Absolutely. And we um, uh, give adequate pain management for it. And uh, prior to surgery, like as I said, we became center of excellence. We have a joint camp where the patients come and attend a two-hour free camp. That's a teaching camp every second Thursday where they meet my whole team. So they know all of this in advance, so there are no surprises. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, it looks like that everything you need is right there with you. Yes, it's, to, it's, it's to a good team. To get you on your feet. Absolutely, I'm blessed. We have a good team. Willis Knighton it has been an excellent place to work and be supportive of the endeavors that we've had and how we've been able to shape this and uh, hopefully do good for our community. Mm -hmm. And you're located on Hospital Drive? Correct, 2449 Hospital Drive. Okay, and how can people reach you if they have any additional questions? So our uh, phone number is 318-212-7841 or you can Google Bozier Orthopedics and uh, we, we, we are there. All right, so yeah, if you guys have any questions for Dr. Vic Chat. Chatworth, then make sure you give him a call and uh, we appreciate you you watching today all about joint replacements and if you didn't get a chance to watch our show we have it we're going to have it streaming later this afternoon on our website of course at ktbs.com but yeah if you're one of those people who just have their joints replaced make sure you do that homework right yes absolutely <laughs> do your that's the key that is you, the key you, you picked up on a great healthy. thing today yep. thank you very much <laughs> all right and thank you for watching healthline 3 have a good day